a week on patrol with a crooked cop. Bribe someone Monday, you had sex with someone Tuesday, transporting drugs Wednesday, you were protecting drug addicts Thursday. Hear how he got busted. I knew that I was going to be dead within 24 hours. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Price of oil was like 103 or so dollars a barrel. Then it's dropped down recently, at close to 91 dollars a barrel. And no one knows the full outcome yet from the so-called Arab Spring. Some analysts fear Islamic extremists will exercise victorious and united action against the West. And as you know, Pat, that uh, that could seriously disrupt the flow of oil from the Middle East. And as Eric Stackelback reports, not everyone thinks America would actually be prepared. A nuclear-armed Iran dominating its neighbors. Egypt controlled by the radical Muslim Brotherhood. Al-Qaeda terrorists roaming free near Yemen's Aden coast, where 40 percent of the world's oil supplies pass through. The Middle East could see these nightmare scenarios develop in the not-so-distant future, and their devastating effects would potentially reach far beyond that troubled region. We are teetering on the verge of an oil interruption, and the United States has no plan for an oil interruption, none. Edwin Black is author of British Petroleum and the Red Line Agreement, the West's secret pact to get Mideast oil. If the oil is cut off and, in, and interrupted, as it is being threatened by Iran and its surrogates, we only have a month or two of our supply. The government has modeled this, and if we lose 10 percent of our oil for six to ten weeks, the country will devolve into chaos. Al-Qaeda has long threatened to attack oil tankers and facilities as a way to create economic chaos. There are also fears that Iran could spark a global oil crisis by shutting down the strategic Strait of Hormuz. If oil is cut off at the Strait of Hormuz immediately, 20 percent of American oil will be cut off, 20 percent of global oil will be cut off, and 40 percent of the seaborne oil will be cut off. Oil prices jumped earlier this month after an OPEC meeting ended in disarray due to disagreements among the oil powers over production levels. Retired uh, Marine Corps General, General James Conway seconds. says events uh, like this two. should encourage the U.S. to seek alternatives to oil. He supports an increase in the production of electric cars. If you look at the existing infrastructure throughout the country, it would simply be a, a more simplified shift to existing infrastructure via electrification than any other means. With many analysts forecasting a return to higher gas prices later this year and beyond, the hunt for viable alternatives to oil produced by rogue states promises to continue. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, Eric. Well, I could give you three or four things we could be doing real quickly. The first is we have an enormous amount of natural gas. We're fighting in the shale beds in the Rockies, the shales in, uh, uh, up in North Dakota, the shales down in Texas, the, the shales in Canada have just got an enormous amount of natural gas, as do some of the shale, uh, shales in Poland and various other countries overseas. Um, it's, a, it's a bonanza of natural gas. We just need to shift over where we've got natural gas pumps and cars that run on natural gas. It could be done. That stuff is, is, has got uh, uh, enough horsepower to give a kick to your car. But uh, we're not moving on it. We're not moving. And we talk about electric cars. It's going to be forever before we get that together. And then people are talking about windmills and things. I mean, you know, come on. That's ridiculous. Uh, th that'll be just a drop in the bucket. Our main reliance is on imported crude oil. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to go much higher. I think this is just a temporary low down to about $90. It's going to kick back up again to 130 And I think one of these days, if we have an oil uh, shock, uh, as could easily happen, uh, we'd be looking at $300 a barrel oil, and you'd be paying at least $10 a, a gallon for it at the pump. Well, so much for that happy news as we start the week. Uh, Lee Webb has the rest of our stories. Lee, what do you have? 
Pat, Republican presidential candidate Michelle Bachman tells CBN News it's troubling that GOP frontrunner Mitt Romney has not joined other candidates in signing a pro-life pledge. Bachman spoke with us during her official campaign kickoff in her hometown of Waterloo, Iowa. Part of the festivities included a party with supporters. Bachman told CBN's David Brody that Romney's refusal to sign a pro-life pledge raises questions. I had issued a statement that said I believed all Republican candidates should sign that statement. Our party platform is pro-life, and I believe that our president also needs to be pro-life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he didn't, so therefore, what is your takeaway from that? Well, I think there's, I think particularly now, Governor Romney has stated that he's pro-life, you know, take him at his word, but he's had some issues with that in his past where he's taken various positions. This was a wonderful opportunity to sign the pledge and demonstrate that he's pro-life. He chose not to. I think that's troubling, and I think that he should have signed the pledge. And raises a question in your mind and potentially voters' minds about that. I think that the voters will have to take a look at this. I know for me it's very troubling. Romney says the pledge is too broad. He believes it would force him to choose only pro-life cabinet members and that it calls for legislation to strip taxpayer funding from hospitals around the country. Polls, though, show uh, Bachman and Romney in a dead heat in Iowa, the first state to vote. You can see the full story with Michelle Bachman tomorrow on the 700 Club and more of the interview on David's blog, The Brody File, at CBNNews.com. Pat? Michelle is really gaining traction. Uh, Tim Pawlenty is uh, was here with us, very attractive guy. He's working like crazy in Iowa, but it doesn't look like his poll numbers are jumping. Whereas Michelle now is is running. Uh, well, if if Romney's got 23, she's got 22. But <clears throat> I think that being from Waterloo, Iowa, and and living now in Minnesota, she has an edge on somebody from. Uh, uh, well, I guess, I don't know where you say Michigan and Massachusetts. So uh, I think she'll take Iowa. The Iowa caucuses are not that hard. And she, but she comes out of there, she becomes then a very, very viable candidate and a very attractive candidate. You know, I, I had a group, Waterloo is a great city. It's a Democrat city. And I had Democrats for Robertson in, uh, in Waterloo. I like Waterloo. You like Waterloo? So, man, she's born in Waterloo, Iowa, yes. Good to know. Okay, well, <laughs> so much for that little bit of historical nonsense, but uh, we'll see. But you, you keep your eyes on Michelle Bachman. She's a comer. Lee? President Obama is looking to jumpstart the stalled budget talks. He's meeting with Senate leaders today at the White House. They have spent weeks trying to work out a deal for cutting government spending and raising the debt limit. But last week, Republicans walked out of negotiations because of an impasse over new taxes. Democrats say they want to close tax loopholes to generate new revenues. Republicans say doing that actually raises taxes. Throwing more uh, tax revenue in, into the mix is simply not going to produce a desirable result, but it won't pass. I mean, putting aside the fact that Republicans don't like to raise taxes, Democrats don't like to either. How do you call closing loopholes uh, to all uh, companies that are making billions of dollars in profits that would generate uh, 40 to 50 billion dollars uh, in revenue. How do you call that a tax hike? That is no tax hike. Republicans are hoping the president will be able to break the logjam. But Pat, uh, Mitch McConnell makes a great point. If uh, Democrats wanted to, to raise taxes, why didn't they do it when Nancy Pelosi was in charge? Well, that's a good point. I think the uh, Republicans would have filibustered, but. Um, I think some of the loopholes that are out there are just obscene, and there's no reason that uh, some of them, that whole tax code is a disaster. Jimmy Carter said, you know, he used that old Southern phrase, it's a disgrace to the human race, but that's what he said. And it is a disgrace, and it should be scrapped, the whole monstrosity, and they ought to start very simply with a simple flat tax. And we're looking for some candidate to say this is the way it ought to go. And that means just the scores of those uh, exemptions and carve-outs and gimmicks that are in the tax code to be done away. That would be tough on the tax lawyers who get their money from representing people and getting around those, those uh, uh, barriers. But nevertheless, uh, I, I don't think that's a tax hike, but the, the, the Republicans are hanging tough on this whole matter. And, you know, it's probably just as well they are because uh, people are looking for somebody that would uh, stand up strong. But I, I, I think... <laughs> Being too doctrinaire on some things, like that pledge uh, that Michelle Bachman was talking about, that would you know would bind the hands of a candidate too much, 
and uh, not being willing to, to budge on the question of, of uh, corporate loopholes, and there are plenty of them out there that are obscene that could be closed. There's no reason we can't do that without in any way affecting the economy except just bringing a little bit more money into the Treasury. But um, anyhow, I salute the Tea Party. They're tough, and we need tough leaders. Lee. Floodwaters leave thousands without homes in Minot, North Dakota. The Soros River peaked two feet lower than expected, but it's still 13 feet above flood stage. Minot's mayor estimates that around 4,500 homes are destroyed in his area. In Nebraska, the Fort Calhoun nuclear station is surrounded by water. Workers were forced there to shut the plant, uh, plant down when floodwaters were from the Missouri River reached the plant's containment buildings. Backup generators, though, are cooling the plant and officials say there is no danger to the public. Residents of nearly two dozen states are coping with potential flooding today. Same-sex marriage, now the law in New York State. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the move sends a message to the rest of the nation. Traditional marriage supporters are already, though, mobilizing to defeat legislators who switch sides. Charlene Israel has more. Eyes 33, nays 29. After a close vote, Governor Andrew Cuomo signed same-sex marriage into law. Democracy works when the people speak. And the people spoke in volumes over these past few months. And this legislature responded this week to their calls. The bill makes New York only the third state after Vermont and New Hampshire, where the legislator voted to legalize gay marriage. The move is a huge win for the gay rights community. I am going to get married in the next year. I guarantee it. Key points of contention were for religious protections. Republican lawmakers insisted on provisions protecting religious groups from lawsuits if they refused to provide their buildings or services for same-sex ceremonies. That means if a church or a clergy declines to accommodate a same-sex wedding, they cannot be penalized. We have to remember that even if they have the broadest possible religious exemption, uh, that's only one of the arguments against same-sex marriage. Uh, this is a bad idea no matter what kind of religious protections they include. Traditional marriage supporters believe their loss in New York could have a national impact. In his campaign for president, President Obama said he did not support gay marriage. Now he says his position is evolving. I believe that gay couples deserve the same legal rights as every other couple in this country. I think he's been disingenuous uh, all along in saying that he opposes same-sex marriage because, in fact, he has opposed every possible measure uh, for preserving the traditional definition of marriage. New York's Archbishop Timothy Dolan, who fought hard against the measure, is disappointed. I think a society, a culture is at its peril if we, if we presume to tamper with what has been uh, settled and given and, and already taught us and cherished for uh, the history of civilization. Charlene Israel, CBN News. Where do you think we're heading with this, Pat? Uh, I think we need to remember the term sodomy came from a town that was known as Sodom, and Sodom was destroyed by God Almighty, and the thing that they practiced was homosexual activity, and even they tried to rape angels who came down there, so I'm sick. that's the kind of people they were. But uh, Beyond that, that, Jesus didn't, when he spoke of Sodom, he didn't say anything about the homosexuality. He talked about just the fact that business was as, was as usual until God decided to destroy it. And he sent an angel down there and he said to Lot and his family, get out now because I'm going to destroy this whole area. So th that's where sodomy came from. We use the term sodomy and it means Sodom. And what's it like? Well, uh, we're heading that way as a nation and in history. There's never been a civilization ever in history that has embraced homosexuality and turned away from traditional fidelity, traditional marriage, traditional child rearing, and uh, uh, has survived. There isn't one single civilization that has survived that ha openly embraced homosexuality. So you say, what's going to happen to America? Well, if history is any guide, the same thing is going to happen to us. We're on a slippery slope, and, and it's going to kick over in a hurry. We're looking at financial problems of, of, mag of, of huge magnitude. Our, our, there's squabbling among the highest levels in our government. They don't seem to be able to get together on the you know how to handle the fiscal crisis we're dealing with. 
and now we have social unrest, then we have floods, and we have danger, and we have too much heat, and we have uh, all kinds of problems, and we have the possibility of an oil uh, a squeeze, and then we have nuclear uh, weapons in the hands of rogue nations like uh, North Korea and Iran. It's not a pretty world we live in right now, and we need all of God's help we can get. And I don't think we're exactly setting ourselves up for His favor. Lee? A group of Jews and Muslims team up to fight a proposal to ban circumcision in San Francisco. The procedure is practiced in both faiths. The unlikely alliance is suing to block the city from putting the measure on the ballot in November. The law would ban circumcision on children under the age of 18. That would make it a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in prison and a $1,000 fine. Opponents of the ban say California law prevents local governments from restricting medical procedures. Flash mobs are taking a dangerous turn. They began innocently enough with large groups of people getting together to dance spontaneously. But some flash mobs aren't dancing. They're robbing. In fact, they're called flash robs. The incidents involve a group of people who make plans to steal via some kind of social media. And flash rob videos are now popping up on YouTube. As you saw on their faces, they thought it was pretty funny, you know, but we sure don't. Police are concerned. They say this type of incident can turn violent when the mob mentality takes over. Pat? Well, I know this sounds hard, and I better be careful because I'll get in trouble. But <clears throat> I believe the store owners should have appropriate weapons, whether it is pepper spray, uh, whether it is stun guns, whether it is shotguns or whatever. But if a mob comes into the store and begins wrecking chaos, I think if some of them wind up in the hospital, I think it might deter others from doing the same thing. But this is a, a spreading trend that kids think it's cute. It isn't cute to go rob and steal somebody when their livelihood depends on it. Right? I just think a big old dog will work. Put a big old dog and say, sick him, be good to go. You My know? dog's too sweet. Well, <laughs> I gotta get a mean, I don't have a mean dog. You gotta get a trained mean dog. I know you're gonna talk about blue. Okay, we're gonna switch gears, you ready? I'm, I'm, I guess. Are what you a doing? salty person or a sweet person? Like when you like the munchies, do you like salt or sweet? Um, I don't like either one, to tell you the truth. I, 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 I think that the salt will kill you, though I can't stand too much salt. Well, well, then you were a perfect lead into I, my story. I, yes, I, Pat. I went out and ate, ate someplace last night. I won't mention where it was. It was fast food or something. But anyhow, about 12 o'clock, I had this unbelievable thirst. I was pouring water down myself. Because, I mean, it was a, you know, like a cheeseburger. Yeah. Must have had too much sodium or too much salt. It must have had. Well, that's why we got to right. talk about this next story. Did you know that the more salt you eat, the more salt you want, and the fatter you become? Most people think about cutting fat. They think about cutting carbs. They think about cutting calories, but they don't necessarily think about cutting salt. I guarantee you're going to think about cutting salt after you see our next report. It is incredible. So what do you want to do? You want to stay with us. Also, if you have a question for Pat, we want to hear from you. All we ask you to do is just log on to CBN.com. Why? Because our chat room is open and we're going to bring it online later on today's show. Coming up later. Someone with a badge has a lot of power. A crooked cop gets busted and goes on the lam. I can just run and stay in the woods and nobody would ever find me. Why he walked out of the woods after 22 years. That's a very, very scary feeling. Obamacare is not only going to ruin our health care system, but it's going to put us so far in debt we will never recover. Perhaps worst of all, it was concocted in an undemocratic process. In locked rooms in the middle of the night, Obamacare was passed and rammed down the throats of the American people. In January, after we delivered petitions to the House, they voted to repeal. Now the Senate is only four votes short of repeal as well. It's critical that you call today and add your voice to the new U.S. Senate petition. Even if you've signed a petition or made a call, do it again and ask your friends to do it again. We don't want them to ever think that we're giving up so that they can give up. Call 1-800-899-5051 or go online to repealitnow.org to sign the official petition. Together, we can force Washington to repeal this costly and destructive law. Call 1-800-899-5051.
In a 700 Club exclusive interview, John Tesh reveals his secret journey through depression and hopelessness. I had been in horrible, excruciating pain for four straight months. I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't play music anymore. And the only thing that brought him back from the edge. I guarantee you, at 58 years old, I have tried everything. A shocking revelation from John Tesh. I just couldn't take the pain anymore. On the 700 Club, Thursday. You want to lose weight? Cut out salt. Mm -mm. Start eating salt-free matzahs and things like that. Read the labels. Shock you. But most of us know that too much salt is bad for our health. But now studies show that a high-sodium diet is even more dangerous than previously thought. What makes it worse is that salt is in almost everything we eat. Read the labels. Here's Laurie Johnson with tips on how to hold the salt. Heart disease kills someone in America every 23 seconds. High blood pressure is often the culprit, which many times can be caused by too much sodium or salt in the diet. Now, research also links salt to things like cancer, diabetes, dementia, and kidney disease. According to Heather Jones, author of The Salt Solution, it can also make you fat. You know, most people think about losing weight. They think about cutting fat. They think about cutting carbs. They think about cutting calories. But they don't necessarily think about cutting salt, but they really should. Brain scans show sodium triggers dopamine, the neurotransmitter associated with pleasure, which can mean the more salt you eat, the more you want. Sodium also boosts insulin production, which can lead to weight gain. And salt increases thirst, which wouldn't be so bad if we turned to water, but statistics show most people reach for high-calorie drinks. The government recommends consuming only 1,500 milligrams of salt a day, which is two-thirds of a teaspoon. Most Americans consume more than twice that amount. So where's all this salt coming from? 80% comes from processed foods. Salt helps preserve food and adds flavor. Just one serving of many canned soups, sauces, lunch meat, and many other packaged foods can contain way more than a full day's recommended amount of sodium. I really wanted to make a change. Like most Americans, Shannon Ferry loved salty foods but was afraid of what they were doing to her. My mom had triple bypass surgery at 44. My grandmother died at 45. So it's in my family history. So that's a big thing when I think about the foods that I eat. She tried the salt solution plan and has already lost 18 pounds and 11 inches. Now, if you think you just can't live without salty foods, think again, because if you go without them for just a little while, you actually stop wanting them. How does that happen? We can literally train our taste buds. Each one contains about 100 receptor cells, which only lives about two weeks and then is replaced. So for the first two weeks of the salt solution plan, you cut out all sodium. Plus, during that time, you load up on foods like spinach, bananas, almonds, and milk because they contain key minerals that cleanse the body of excess salt. The minerals, sodium, magnesium, and calcium, potassium, all work together. And they work together to keep your body running the way it should. And we're getting way too much of one, way too much of the salt, and not near enough of the, the other three. Living a low-salt lifestyle means long-term changes, fewer fast food stops, and making the effort to cook from home with non-processed ingredients and seasoning with spices other than salt. I would take a Sunday afternoon and just look through the plan and just sort of plan out my lunches and breakfasts and just kind of get them all ready and prepare them ahead of time and just put them away in containers where I could just grab it right from the fridge. 
When you do eat out, ask the chef to hold the salt and use other spices instead. When shopping, don't believe everything you read. Low sodium labels can be misleading. So look at the nutrition facts and do a little math. Every 100 grams of food should contain less than 120 milligrams of sodium. Sea salt is heavily marketed as a healthy alternative to table salt. And while it does contain some additional minerals, don't go overboard, because no matter what kind of salt, for good health, eat it in small doses. Lori Johnson, CBN News. I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll lose 10, 12 pounds if you go on a salt-free diet or low, reduced salt mm -hmm. for uh, 30 days. But that means you got to read the labels. Look at a slice of bread. Maybe it'll have 190 milligrams of salt mm -hmm. in it. You look at, I tell you what's got it is, is um, uh, the sauces for barbecue. Mm. Have you seen it? Have no. you read them? No. 20, uh, sometimes 800 milligrams per tablespoon. What? Unreal. The that's stuff. why you got to make your own stuff. I think that's the key. And so well, a point that Lori but all, said. But all this barbecue, you know, they used to call them salt snacks because the beverage companies knew that if you ate more of these uh, pretzels, mm -hmm. more of this, uh, you know, all the chips and stuff they yeah. got, that they would make you thirsty and make you want to drink more beer. So it's who just, buys Eagle? Who buys Eagle? Eagle is the maker of these snacks. Oh, my <laughs> God. People buy Eagle. But the person who bought the company oh. was Budweiser. Oh, really? Because they want people eating salt snacks. Well, listen, it's the same thing when you go to a movie theater. I mean, look at the popcorn. The popcorn is so salty that you have to have the drink, and the drink is five bucks, and it's this big. You know, it all, all right. kind of comes together. Well, I guarantee yes. you want to lose weight. You don't want to lose weight. You look so good. Well, God bless you on that one. I was telling you, I worked out five days, I got know. on the scale, and lost zero. Stop. I mean, you know, you eat bread, go to matzahs. I, I, I did a deal where I was eating matzahs. Yeah. They get kind of good after a while. Yeah. But if you go off of salt for about a couple of weeks, fast or whatever, then the next thing you eat something, it tastes so good, you can't believe it. Your taste buds are say, hey, this is wonderful. That's true. Who? Okay. Okay. We're moving on. Do it, ladies and gentlemen. Do it. <laughs> Spare your heart. Spare your heart. All there right. you go. Well, up next, this is a fascinating story. He wore a badge, actually, to break the law. Bribe someone Monday. Uh, you had sex with someone unwarranted Tuesday. You know, uh, you, you, you were transporting drugs Wednesday. You were protecting drug addicts Thursday. Well, even internal affairs has to make a move. Incredible. Watch what happened after this cop was busted. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. This is the information retailers don't want you to know, especially now. They don't want you to learn just how much money you've been giving away to retail markups on items you purchase for your home. All because you don't know how to buy like the insiders do at Direct Buy Club, the home improvement and furnishings club with direct insider prices. When you go to Direct Buy, you know that things are going to be a lot less than retail and um, you don't have to worry about sales. It's just you know, one price, and it's a low price too. If I would shop around and, and, and investigate, uh, and without a shadow of a doubt, Direct Buy would have the lowest price. Members buy top quality name brand merchandise from hundreds and hundreds of trusted manufacturers. So call the number on your screen now and we'll rush you your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy Club and your certificate for a free 30-day membership. This is a limited offer, so call now. Tomorrow, a sinking boat. Water was up to his knees. A dead radio. Nothing would turn on and circling sharks. That's when it said in that we're not gonna make it. Plus, a summer cookout with the Next Food Network star. Aaron McCargo serves up the perfect side dish, Big Daddy style. Tomorrow, 
on the 700 Club. To see this week's most viewed stories, go to CBN.com. Well, over the weekend, you probably heard that the feds had caught Whitey Bulger, who was one of the most wanted criminals who has been on the lam, as they say, for, what, 18 or 19 years, and uh, living with his girlfriend at some place in the far west. But Robert Davis was one of America's longest-running fugitives. He was hunted by the FBI and U.S. Marshals for 22 years. But before Robert was a fugitive, he was in law enforcement. Robert Leon Davis was a crooked cop. Just about every crime you could name, we did. Uh, and all the while, we were wearing a badge. Because well, someone with a badge has a lot of power. He grew up a hard-headed child in the care of his Christian grandmother. She used Bible stories to teach him right from wrong. She said, one day you will remember, when I'm gone, you will remember the things I'm telling you now. He joined the New Orleans Police Department with good intentions and outstanding ability. I went on with, uh, you know, with good hopes and trying to, uh, as much as one man can, change the world. That was one of the few places that uh, espoused honor. And uh, I went on the force uh, with the intentions of being honorable. But his ideas about changing the world were challenged his first day on the job. The senior officer I'm riding with, 17 years of experience, just started stopping guys for no reason. Started searching guys for no reason. Started stopping vehicles for no reason. I mean, he was just doing crazy stuff. You know, he was doing everything that the academy said don't do. He filed a complaint with supervisors, but they convinced him to think twice before blowing the whistle on another officer. So at that very moment, I realized what I was getting involved in. I realized that this particular force I was on was corrupt, but I realized that uh, I had two choices to make. Either I get out of this, or either I join the club. And unfortunately, I joined the club. Everything Grandma told me is out the door now. Corruption is deep within me. I think at the rate I was going, I could have wound up killing somebody. Robert and his partners administered their own form of street justice. Bribe someone Monday, uh, you had sex with someone unwarranted Tuesday, you know, uh, you, you, you were transporting drugs Wednesday, you were protecting drug addicts Thursday. Well, even Internal Affairs has to make a move. Complaints against him piled up. Internal Affairs set up surveillance and caught Robert breaking the laws he was sworn to protect. I was looking at 30 years in Angola, and I had already had placed 27 people in the same prison. And the word had came down that once I was found guilty, that they would rape me and that they would kill me. So I knew that I was going to be dead within 24 hours of being placed in Angola. He decided to run away before he came to trial. While out on bail, he studied survival techniques and learned how to live in the wilderness. He made his way into Canada and lived as a fugitive. I can just run and stay in the woods and nobody would ever find me. So I made that decision. But sometime I would come out maybe to earn some money, uh, $20, $30, get some canned goods, and go back into the woods. I mean, it was the only place I really absolutely felt safe at. For 22 years, he crossed the U.S. and Canadian borders, using different names in different cities. He lived with the knowledge that he could be caught at any moment, and he blamed God for his circumstances. And how could there be a God? This God thing is, uh, it, it's, it's a charade. I mean, it can't, can't be true. And please, I mean, don't mention Jesus Christ. I really didn't, I had an affinity for disliking him, you know, because I was like, this guy is, a, you know, it's a, it's a farce. I became an atheist, you know, a hardcore atheist. After years of living on the run, his mind was a mess of emotions and regret. Robert thought of killing himself. For a stretch of two or three days, I was going between suicide and, and all kinds of feelings. It's just so many things started coming up. And I believe that uh, at that point, I just wanted to end it all. And I was prepared to end it all. I mean, I had a pistol with me, and, and, and I thought about it. Yet passages from the Bible his grandmother taught him came to mind. Robert decided to test God, and God answered. I kept testing him with many, many things. There was an old coffee can sitting out there, and I, I took a rock, and I placed it on top of an upside-down can. And I said, when I wake up in the morning, if that rock is underneath that can, 
that I believe you exist and I will turn myself in. And when I woke up, the rock was not on the can. I never had the courage to look at that can. When you really think you're dealing with the living God in person in the middle of the woods of Tennessee, that's a very, very scary feeling. And I instantly, instantly lost all atheistic viewpoints. Instantly just lost it and reached back out to where I was before with my grandmother. You know, visions of my grandmother and, and visions of Bible passages begin to come back in my head. And I, that very next day, surrendered uh, to law enforcement. But I had first surrendered to God. He went back to New Orleans a new man, ready to face the charges against him. I could not fathom a God that was telling me to surrender, only to be surrendering to debt. It had to be surrendering to life. I did not know that the judge was going to release me. I actually thought I would get the 30 years. She felt that I had served time and that she was going to take a chance on me. She told me that. I'm going to take a chance on you. Robert is a free man. He tells his story to police academy recruits and works to bring rogue cops to justice. I feel that my very reason for coming back out of the woods is to help people, at least assist one cop to not do what I did, and that it will cause a common citizen to report a cop that's bad. As he looks back on his 22 years on the run from God and the law, he now knows that he was never alone. God was there for me, and he's there for me now. I forgot God, and I hated him. But God didn't forget me. And as much as I hated him, he loved me. He loves me and he loves you. <clears throat> Nobody can run away from God. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the winds of the morning, go into the uttermost parts of the sea, you're there. God's always there. And our God is a consuming fire. He's incredible. He is the author of the universe. He is more powerful than anything we can conceive of. The amazing thing is he'll put up with people like you and me and Robert, that he puts up with us. He looks like, if, you know, if I were God, I'd probably just destroy most of people like me. I wouldn't put up with me, but God does. Because God loves us, and what he wants to do is to redeem us and make us part of heaven. His goal is to make you and me like Jesus and then to live forever with him in heaven. That's his goal. And in union with Christ, the Bible says, in union with Christ, we have become God's portion. We're his portion. And when it's all over, this is what God's going to get out of this universe that he built. So if you don't know him, call upon him now. And if you need help, we've got people here who will be glad to pray with you. So just go to your telephone, call in. Somebody's here and you say, I want to find Jesus. I want to pray and ask one of these counselors to pray with you. They'd be glad to do it. They'd be glad to do it. Well, we've got some more things on this program that'll be fascinating for you, and so let's go to Christy to hear about it. Mm. Thank you so much, Pat. Still ahead, the story of a young wife and mother who suffers panic attacks. My heart would begin um, beating so hard, I would be overwhelmed with extreme nausea to the point to where I would begin to vomit. It was my secret. It was my big secret. But she couldn't keep her secret for much longer. Find out why, coming up later on The 700 Club. Brenda, you gotta see the video I saw on The 700 Club. I pray God will do the same awesome work in your life. Go to CBN.com to I Saw It on The 700 Club for a fast, easy way to see and share your favorite videos. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. 
it's already in your liver. My wife Brenda sat there and cried, and I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard cancer treatment centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now, and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Pressure from abortion advocates has forced the removal of pro-life billboards in Los Angeles. As CBN News reported, the signs aim to educate the Latino community about abortion. They read the most dangerous place for a Latino is in the womb. Now the advertising company has taken down those signs. The billboards were sponsored by the Latino Partnership for Conservative Principles. The executive director of that group says it's clear these pro-abortion activists will go to any length to protect their abortion business in minority communities. More viewers are tuning in to watch CBN WorldReach programs in the Philippines. The number of people, for example, watching the 700 Club Asia was 70% higher than the same time last year. And the radio version of that program is growing as well. Last month, 325 listeners professed faith in Christ. And close to 14,000 people decided to follow Jesus last month through a combination of other CBN WorldReach programming in the Philippines. And you can find out more about CBN's WorldReach by logging on to cbn.com slash worldreach. Pat and Christy will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Hi there, neighbor. Pat Boone here from my good friends at Swiss America, the company that makes retirement dreams come true with gold. A lot of folks are shifting a portion of their retirement funds into a new precious metals IRA with Swiss America. And since 2004, these IRAs are up in value over 150%. I've been a very satisfied client of Swiss America for many years now because they believe in honesty, fair prices, and superior service. It's time to put your financial future on a gold standard right now. I own gold because it's a hedge of protection for my family. Even my grandkids can see that our paper money is becoming less valuable every day. So call or visit Swiss America now. Ask for the Pat Boone free DVD and gold IRA kit. Get the best education you can on gold, the best asset to own during these uncertain times. Call or visit online now. Well, Trish Wilkerson had a secret, a secret she hid from everyone, even her own family. Then one day, Trish had a complete meltdown, and her secret wasn't a secret anymore. My heart would begin um, beating so hard that you could literally look at my chest and just see my heart beating from my chest. It was my secret. It was my big secret. And... When I experienced those episodes, most of the time I would hide myself. I was the master of disguise. Being good was never good enough for Trish Wilkinson. She wanted to be perfect. Best mother, best wife, had the cleanest house, best Christian, best teacher, best friend, best performer. So Trish made sure every move she made was flawless. No shortcuts, no rest, and certainly no mistakes. I equated performance to value. Um, I did not know how to handle 
if you disliked me or if you were dissatisfied with me. And if I was a failure, then you weren't gonna love me. As a wife and mother, Trisha's life got more difficult as she tried to have the perfect marriage and perfect children. Eventually, it all caught up with her and she began having panic attacks. The episodes would pass, but Trish didn't dare tell anyone about them. Instead, she pretended everything was normal, but the attacks grew worse. I would be overwhelmed with extreme nausea um, to the point to where I would begin to vomit. And then you had this overwhelming sense of extreme fear. It would be an array of things. Well, I'm afraid of losing my mind. I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of losing control. Finally, when the attacks grew too painful to bear, she went to the ER to see a doctor. And he diagnosed me with severe clinical depression. Well, I refused to believe that diagnosis because I was a born again Christian. And I thought, I am a Christian. I love God with all my heart. And not only do I love God with all my heart, I am working for Him. This, this diagnosis has got to be incorrect. So I ignored the fact that I was clinically depressed for four years. She didn't understand why this was happening. After all, in her mind, she had done everything perfectly. I was perplexed and I was angry and I had conversation with God in my heart and in my mind, I began to say, God, I don't understand why you would allow this to happen in my life. For four years, Trish ignored the diagnosis, but the panic attacks interfered with every aspect of her life. Trish could no longer pretend everything was okay. I just totally broke down and it became reality for me and I had to face it. I had to face my fear and I had to face reality and I needed um, daily medical attention. Through her sessions with a Christian counselor, she realized God loves her unconditionally, even when she's not perfect. He just began to mold me and make me and just began to heal me from the depth of who I was in my soul and helped me to realize, Trish, I love you unconditionally. And my perspective of everything was fresh and new and healthy and vibrant. And I was empowered and I was motivated. Today, Trish is at peace. She doesn't have panic attacks anymore. And she says she clearly understands God's love for her. Now my relationship with Him, I work for Him, but I work for Him because I love Him. I don't work for Him because I feel like I have to merit His love or His grace or His blessing. You can be healed from clinical depression. You can live in victory that every challenge the enemy brings your way, everything society brings your way, God is greater. God is greater. You know, I was just watching that story and I was thinking that's such a familiar trap that many people fall into, men and women. That is, if our life is perfect, then we are perfect. And I tell you what, that's the biggest setup for failure in the whole wide world. The reality is that God loves us not because of what we can do or who we are or what our title is. God loves us because he just does. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if we cast our cares upon him, if, well, actually, it's cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. Thank you, Pat. He's over here trying to help me out a little bit. And that really is the truth. You see, God cares for us. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us to hold those burdens of perfection, those burdens and all the issues and challenges that we have in life. You know, as I was watching that young lady's story and she was talking about battling depression and anxiety and panic attacks, you know what the battle really is? It was in her mind. But you know what? God has given us his mind. He says he's given us the mind of Christ. And with that comes power, power to cast down every imagination, power to take every thought captive. He says in his word that for us not to think of the bad things, but think of the good things, those things that are true and good and pure and of good report. That's what God requires of us and calls for us to do. Why? Because he loves us. 
So listen, I want to encourage you today just to know that we're here for you and we're praying for you. And there's so many counselors who would love to pray for you right now. This is a challenge for you. Just call the number right there, 1-800-759-0700. We also have this booklet for you. It's called Depression, Keys to Powerful Living. And remember that Jesus Christ he is not only your savior, but he can save you and free you from all those different things that hold you bondage. So this is yours when you call in right now. Prayer counselors are standing by because we love you. So call in right now. Pat? I saw a piece on 60 Minutes last night uh, about the numbers of children that are homeless mm -hmm. and uh, showed a man, fine man, he had five children. And he lost his job. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any money. So he lost his house. They got mm -hmm. thrown out of their house. And so he had to live in a motel, and then he couldn't pay the bill in the motel. And so he wound up in a car with all his children. Mm -hmm. That's where they lived. And it was just terrible. The kids would go into a Walmart and clean up before they went to school. And it just breaks your heart because he didn't have a job. Finally, he got a job, thank the Lord. And then he moved up from that and got another one. It was kind of a happy ending. But you think that there are million, I mean, 16 million or so kids that are, that are homeless in America. This is America. Well, the guy I'm going to tell you about now is one of those that lost his job. Aerospace engineer Rick Labolt has always been on the cutting edge of technology. But that didn't spare Rick from losing his job a few years ago. About the same time, his wife Kathy also lost work. But they made an amazing comeback. Here's how. Rich Leipold found his dream job at Lockheed Martin, a cutting-edge aerospace manufacturer. He's part of an elite team selected to work on the next generation of military aircraft. But Rich knows what it's like to be in a frantic search for work. In 2007, he lost his job as an aerospace engineer and government aircraft inspector. During the beginning of it, I was kind of lax thinking, oh, I have lots of time, not a problem. And then the money started to run out. I started to really get desperate. His wife, Kathy, lost her job in retail and was also looking for work. Alarming, I, I suppose is the best word. We both really trusted deeply in God. And so we knew that we weren't totally hopeless. Rich received a fraction of his former income through unemployment. The stress at home became overwhelming. There were days, uh, especially first thing in the morning, I would be uh, traumatized with fear of even getting out of bed. That was a really hard emotional time. But I, I know um, by faith, God never leaves you. Kathy found a part-time job while Rich spent his days sending out resumes. Despite their money issues, the CBN partners continued to give each month. Giving is a form of worship. It was never a question of would we or would we not give. We felt that CBN was the best place to go to give, that it was really meeting the needs of the people. This was a real sacrifice for us to give, and we tried to give as much as we could. So they gave Rich's first unemployment check of the year as an offering. They prayed that God would give him the right job. It wasn't long before Rich was hired at Lockheed Martin and Kathy found a better paying job. Now more than ever, the Leipolts remain committed to give to God's work. They're now members of CBN's Chairman Circle. God has given us a huge gift, and we're just, we're just thrilled with, with how awesome it is and how awesome God is, how, how real He is. Psalmist said, I've been young, and I'm now old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. God will look after you if you're faithful to him. In the good times, if you're faithful, he'll look after you in the bad times. Don't forget it. I want to give something to you. If you join our 700 Club and help us help people around the world, I want to give you something called Life Beyond the Grave. It is a story of people who actually died and either went to heaven or went to hell and came back to tell about it. It's fascinating, and we'll give this to you. And if you join our Thousand Club, we'll send five more of these little, little DVDs to you, and you can give them to your friends because it'll touch their lives. Mm -hmm. So call in 1-800-759-0700. So we've got some questions. So we do. Listen, we've opened up our chat room for you throughout the entire show. So we're going to start with Darla, who says, uh, Pat, 
earlier on your show, you had a story about salt, but in the Bible, it says that we are the salt <laughs> of the earth. Why would God call us salt if it's not good for us? Well, salt is a preservative. In the, in the Middle East, that's how they kept uh, meat from uh, rotting. Uh, you know, they'd put salt on it. Uh, so to say you're the salt of the earth, I mean, a little flavoring is okay, but do you want what Jesus said? If your salt has lost its savor, it's not good for anything. Mm. You can't even put it in the dung heap because it'll ruin your plants and vegetables. It isn't good for anything. So he said, we are salty, but we're supposed to have a little flavor. It doesn't, it doesn't mean in the Bible that we're good for people's arteries. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly. What's next? All right. The next one is from Carrie, who says, is it right to have pictures of Jesus in churches? Are they not graven images? Well, you could kind of say they are, but at the same time, I think, you know, splitting hairs, you get legalistic, and then you just, mm -hmm. all you're asking for is a fight. So, uh, I, none of us know what Jesus looks like. So, to say this is a picture of Jesus, we don't know. But we're told not to make graven images or anything of, on earth or in heaven, and not to fall down and worship them. That's what the Bible says. But uh, I, I wouldn't sweat, spill hairs on this. If somebody wants a picture of Jesus, God bless him. What's next? There you go. <laughs> All right, to Mary Brightson, and she says, "Who says?" Um, she says, "I've noticed that there are a lot of stories um, and companies that, or stores and companies that support issues such as gay marriage. Do you think we as Christians should boycott them?" Uh, I tell you, boycotts are tough. They never work. But people have tried boycotting in the past, and uh, they wind up looking silly. So if you personally feel like some uh, business is supporting a cause that you feel is repugnant, then just don't shop with them. But I, I wouldn't or try to organize a boycott. It, it just doesn't work. I, I'm, you know, it's one of those things. But your own personal preferences, that's your business. You can take your business wherever you want to. There you go. All right, let's jump to the next one. Okay. We're rocking. Andre asks, is there any truth to certain items like the Ark of the Covenant or the Holy Grail having magical powers? No. Um, that was easy. The Ark of the Covenant, uh, it was if somebody touched it, you remember, they died. I mean, they put their hands on it. Mm -hmm. And there's some who thought it was like an electrical field around it. I don't know what it was, but it was the holiness of God. But uh, I don't know, but it, the Holy Grail, I think, is, is, is fictional from uh, middle, uh, the Middle Ages of England. But uh, I, don't, I don't think there was such a thing as a Holy Grail with the, the cup that Jesus drank on the Last Supper or whatever the Holy Grail is. Mm -hmm. I, but the idea of, a, of, a, of a, uh, uh, something that we aspire to that is perfection that we want to, to reach, attain that, and that's what's known as the Holy Grail, that, that's okay. But as far as something having magical powers, it ain't going to be there. I what else? Okay. Well, we got a question about a garden. Go. Here we go. Matt wants to know, Pat, what's your opinion on garden gnomes? I know many people think they're harmless, but is there any danger in opening the door of our homes to a cult because of them? I don't know what you're talking about. I was you, thinking the same thing. <laughs> you mean these little statues? Yeah, the little call? statues, I think, but I don't, are they demonic? The travelocity, the little travelocity. Yeah, they're, oh, they're like little nose. Oh, those with little funny little nose with the pointy hats? Yes. Uh, if like you can save money on travelocity, by all means, but don't take any gnomes with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I say this really quick about yeah. my garden? Yeah. So, you know my, the garden that I yeah, built? Yeah, I remember. Why did I have to stop watering them? Because I was watering them and I heard, <laughs> I was like, what in the world? And I thought it was a python, so little, I ran, little, came back, baby. little baby bunnies oh, had yeah. burrowed into my and garden. And they will eat everything. And ate up my garden. They'll do it. You've got to get rid of them. I need as to much, know. As cute as they are. <laughs> All right. Well, tomorrow, no, no, don't get it. I'm no. not going to get a gnome. Yeah, I'm a, a rabbit killing gnome. <laughs> tomorrow, watch how a man and his fishing buddies survived a shark attack. And today we leave you with these words, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. <laughs> In a 700 Club exclusive interview, John Tesh reveals his secret journey through depression and hopelessness. I had been in horrible, excruciating pain for four straight months. I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't play music anymore. And the only thing that brought him back from the edge. I guarantee you, at 58 years old, I have tried everything. A shocking revelation from John Tesh. I just couldn't take the pain anymore. On The 700 Club, Thursday. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, 
feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Chen Shu couldn't hear or speak. His parents were too poor to afford the speech therapy he needed. His mother prayed that God would help her little boy. That's when you were the answer to her prayers and provided Chen Chu with the therapy he needed. You took him out of a silent prison and gave him hope for the future. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.